Hey friends, I'm Becca Robinson and today I'm trying to make a gluten-free sourdough starter from scratch. Okay, so today I am attempting something I've never done before and that's intimidated me for over a year. So we all know <laughs> when the pandemic started, banana bread was like the thing you did while you were at home. And banana bread's never been a problem for me. I'm actually really good at banana bread. And then it was like the second year of the pandemic, banana bread was out, sourdough was in. <laughs> and I've wanted to try my hand at making sourdough from scratch because now that sourdough is having its moment, there's all these incredible recipes to try. And because I'm gluten-free, I have been really intimidated. There's not really any resources for how to do gluten-free sourdough or even to get a gluten-free sourdough starter or how to make one until this woman who I have been following for years and I'm obsessed with, her name is Deanna and her blog is Homestead and Chill. She posted an entire article about how to do a gluten-free sourdough starter and then also how to make a sourdough loaf and I was like, oh my goodness, like maybe I can actually do it. I've been really intimidated by sourdough for a while. I'm really intimidated by fermented things. I did kombucha and it went really well, but even that, it's like kind of intimidating when you're fermenting something because I'm not an expert and to me it just feels like, how do I know that this has not gone bad? How do I know that this is like the good type <laughs> of bacteria? And I know there's a bit of like trust the process, but I thought being able just to just have fresh baked bread that's gluten-free and good and healthy and better for our bodies to digest and has all these like helpful bacteria, especially with how important supporting immunity is in our lives nowadays. I just thought this is all wins. Like why not try it? Plus I'm just down for trying new baking things all the time. So I figured I'd show you the process. I have no idea what I'm doing. I am just going to step by step by step follow Deanna's tutorial from her blog and I'll link her tutorial below. So any of you guys who want to do it can follow. And even if you don't want gluten-free, she has incredible sourdough recipes on her blog that you can go look at. So I'm just going to go like step by step by step and keep my fingers crossed that I don't mess it up. Okay, so what Deanna says that we need is we need an organic apple, which we're gonna grate, and then that is going to be what helps to get the bacteria situation going. I needed a clean glass jar that can seal, so I got that. And then we need filtered water that is room temperature, so I have mine sitting out back there and we need a flower. So the cool thing about this chick is that she is like very analytical and so she actually tested different gluten-free flowers. Like she literally did recipe testing to figure out which one worked the best. She says don't just use one of the gluten-free flour replacements like the one-to-one -one, which is generally what I use for baking cookies and breads and stuff. She says brown rice flour or buckwheat flour worked the best. Okay, it says step one is to mix the flour, the water, and the grated apple in a bowl.
Okay, so I did everything she said and it was like super dry. Like I could barely get my spoon through it. So I reread her entire article and she said you could add more water if it wasn't the right consistency and I feel I did. And now I feel like it's the right consistency. Now it feels like, like dough. But I don't know because I've never made sourdough before. So this is what it looks like. Hopefully it's right. Okay, now it's time to put it in the jar. Hopefully the jar is big enough. It's supposed to double in size and it made more dough than I was expecting, but we'll see. There's the jar I have. She also said to try not to get any on the sides. So we'll see how that goes. Tried to get any air bubbles out. I don't know about doubling in size. I, we'll see. I could mess the whole thing up. It just, it was way more than I thought it was gonna be. This is like a big container. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now I'm supposed to mark on the container where it is, you can use a rubber band, she says, so that you know when it grows. So I'm gonna mark with a dry erase right there. And then I let it sit <laughs> for 72 hours. So apparently what's supposed to happen is over the next 72 hours, this is supposed to get bubbly and start to grow. And then we're gonna do a feed, which means adding more, taking some of the starter out adding more flour and we do that a couple times. So this is like a seven day process to get it fully ready to bake with, but she says you can use the discard to make things like crackers. So that's kind of exciting too. So wish me luck. Okay, I need a name. There are so many creative names for people's sourdough starters. So if you have a good one, drop it in a comment below for me. Okay, so we discard and feed on day three and then we discard and feed again on day six. And then apparently day seven, it's ready. So, wish me luck. Mm -hmm. 